Ladies and gentlemen, under both sides of this house, wars still happen and interventions still happen. Women are still treated terribly under both sides. The question is whether or not we can perceive women's rights justifications as being equally legitimate to the multitude of other justifications which are given by states when they enter into interventions. We want to prove to you two things today in opening opposition. First, we want to prove that interventions can help women. And as a result of that, the feminist movement would be ill-advised to take this option. Second, we want to talk about the harms that come from saying that they can't help women. Two points under that. First, the importance of keeping gender as a type of justification for intervention. Second, looking at the, the military benefit from having a feminist discourse. I have four points of rebuttal. The first thing that we get from Freddie, which is interesting, is on the basis of secular states, right? So we're going to be overthrowing secular states. It is very implausible that this will happen, right? Interventions cost a massive amount of political capital. It is difficult to get your countrymen on side to go in there in the first place. It is usually only the case that the countries which we will decide to intervene are countries which are terrible, right? Ones which can be like persuaded to your publics as being absolutely abhorrent for a number of different reasons, right? Those don't tend to be secular states, the kind of states like written constitutions, which they're talking about, right? More on that later. Second, with regards to Afghanistan, we think that this flippant analysis ignores the utter horror that was like life for women prior to the intervention in Afghanistan, right? We think that at best you can say there is a, has, has been no increase whatsoever. We don't think that's true, right? No thanks. We think that, first of all, we have taken back towns from the Taliban. Women's lives are considerably better there. Second of all, we think that it ignores the fact that like Malala was able to come out of that situation. That never would have been the case before. More on that later. Third, with regards to cultural relativism. I find this point baffling. I find it baffling to suggest that women around the world who are being oppressed and women around the world who are being subject to war rape think that there is a culturally relative reason why that is the case. I don't think it's true. No. I don't think it's true that the kinds of oppression that both sides of the house probably abhor are things which are culturally relative. It's not just a question of religious freedom. Obviously it is the case that like Muslim women ought to be treated well. They ought to be granted religious freedom in addition to their other rights. The problem is right now they aren't. We're not saying that we want to impose an entirely Western standard of rights on them by like taking out all elements of religion from states, right? We want a like, robust like human rights doctrine which protects religious freedom, but we want that alongside doctrine which protects women's rights and the right to have like education. Oh, no. Lastly, with regards to the fact that we are unable to critique, right? It is obviously true that at any point that you take a stand on anything, you are like you, you at some way have to step back from it after and say, okay, we were wrong on this level. We think that it is better under our model, but because what you are actively doing is looking at the way that the intervention has potentially helped or hurt women. You have an active really? discourse about the role of women in the conflict, which you don't get at the point that you are just saying that every intervention is necessarily a feminist. Now, first, why is it the case that interventions can help women? Really importantly, it can bring about a rapid end to civil violence. Often, civil violence is where war rape happens, and women are disproportionately affected by the kinds of situations which cause states to intervene in the first place, right? What we think is incredibly important on side opposition is to recognize that in all of the situations where states tend to enter, it's the kind of oppressive environment and the real baddies which tend to be more baddy to women than they are to men. Women are horrifically oppressed in many of these states. Second, we think that as a result of that, we can replace oppressive regimes. As a result of replacing oppressive regimes, we can do things like draft constitutions. These constitutions will have the kind of robust human rights doctrine, which is like uh, accepted on an international standard, but is not within these countries now. Also, we think that we can create civil infrastructure which supports the development of women's rights. All of this you don't get, and you don't get the push for this, at the point that you say that women's rights are not part of the intervention, they're not part of the reason that you're going there in the first place. So here are the harms that come from saying that we can't. Humanitarian intervention is often thought to be legitimate for a variety of reasons. It might be for reasons of genocide, it might be for, for reasons of vast civil war, state-sanctioned violence, use of torture, flagrant denial of various civil freedoms. At the point that you say that women's rights are not equal to those, you are diminishing them and delegitimizing them as being equally bad to all of the other reasons why Western governments are willing to intervene. You create a rhetoric around feminism that means it is intrinsically separate from all of the other bads. And as a result of that, we see it as being second tier. We see it as being something which is optional that governments can look at and say is bad, right? 
why it's important. Because Melinda, we think that, uh, yeah, Matt, go ahead. Our contention is not that um, feminists should say that gender rights aren't important. Our contention is that they should say that these, these interventions always harm them. We are saying it's important and we're saying that's the reason that you shouldn't intervene. It's obviously not true that intervention always harm women's rights for all of the reasons I told you about, like writing constitutions and like creating new and less oppressive no, states. And so far as that is clearly factually false, it makes considerably more sense to try to engage with these states and engage with, with these interventions on the basis of the fact that women's rights are equally bad to the number of other reasons we are willing to intervene. Right? We think that removing gender from discourse delegitimizes this. Why is this a problem, specifically with regards to the military, right? We think that two things under this. First of all, it creates a more feminist armed forces when you are willing to say that feminists can support intervention and do support intervention. Women fight in the military. We think it'd be very good if people who identified as feminists were willing to go to war and thought that they were doing something that was good for their cause, especially when they think that feel like the reasons behind that are things which are pushing forward a very important fight for women's rights. We think that at the point that you see like feminism as being oppositional to the military, you can see the same kind of regrettable power structures which Freddie throughout his speech is so happy to abhor. We think that at the point that you say that the military is a man's institution, which can only go in, into conflicts looking for men's rights and uh, looking for uh, more masculine rights or rights which are de-gendered, that's a problem. Second, at the point of going in, these feminist concerns are going to be more taken on board when the feminist movement has like spoken to the military and in some way like talked about the importance of if you're going to like, justify an intervention on the basis of women's rights, you have to make sure that you do something for them. You have to make sure that you get in that robust human rights doctrine that we find so incredibly important and the best like tool for potential future state building. It is true under both sides of the house that these things like war rape happen, that this is, like there are governments around the world which grotesquely and, and horribly oppress women. We are still going to intervene in these like states. The question is whether or not we can do it with the feminist justification or not. We think that saying that uh, women's rights are less legitimate than reasons of genocide or reasons of civil war is simply false. Women are equally important. We're very, very happy to oppose.